Hi everyone, my name is Khang and I'm a developer advocate working on TensorFlow Lite. And today I would like to give you a brief introduction about on-device machine learning. Many people may have an impression that machine learning models run on the server side with large CPUs, large TPUs. But the thing is that edge devices has already become a very important platform for machine learning. So why is it important to run machine learning models on edge devices? The first reason is latency. The use cases that require low latency, such as processing video in real time, definitely requires running the machine learning models on the device. The second reason is offline availability. You can use the feature even when there's no internet connection. And the third reason is user privacy protection because you don't need to send sensitive user data to the server for processing. And with the availability to run machine learning models on edge devices, a lot of new features has become possible. Let me give you some example of on-device machine learning running in real apps. The first one is the feature on YouTube that allows users to try different kinds of cosmetics using AR. The app detects users' lips in real time, as you can see in the video demo here, and it replaces the color of the lipstick with computer vision. Or there's another example of Google Translate app that has the features to allow you to capture text with your phone camera and translate them in real time without any internet connection. TensorFlow Lite is a framework to help you implement on-device machine learning. And it allows you to run TensorFlow models on edge devices. With TensorFlow Lite, you can use the same machine learning models across platforms without having to customize for each one. TensorFlow Lite currently supports three platforms. The first one is Android and iOS smartphones, then the Linux-based IoT devices, and the microcontrollers. Let me walk you through some details of the platforms that TensorFlow Lite supports. The so smartphone is probably the most popular platform for on-device machine learning at this moment, because many of Google largest apps are already using TensorFlow Lite, like Google Photos, Zboard, YouTube, and Assistant. And there are also many popular third-party apps like Uber, Hike, Airbnb, and so on are using TensorFlow Lite in production. Many developers are using TensorFlow Lite for use cases around image, text, and speech. We're also seeing a lot of new and emerging use cases around audio and content generation. And you can quickly try TensorFlow Lite on smartphones with our sample apps. We have more than 10 sample apps demonstrating different on-device machine learning use cases, including both computer vision and natural language processing. Please go to the TensorFlow Lite website and check it out. And besides TensorFlow Lite, Google also has a product called MLKit for using machine learning on mobile. It builds on top of TensorFlow Lite and provides a list of pre-trained models through APIs for popular on-device machine learning use cases. For example, you can recognize text, detect objects, and more via an easy-to-use API that mobile developers can use even without learning the complex machine learning concepts. So that was smartphone. And let's take a look at the second platform that has live support, which is the Linux-based IoT devices, such as the Raspberry Pi. Here's an example of TensorFlow Lite being used in an IoT device. So Ecovax is a company that produces vacuum cleaner robots, and they use TensorFlow Lite on their robot to detect obstacles so that the robots can avoid the obstacles effectively and clean your house. Besides TensorFlow Lite as a software solution, Google also has a hardware accelerator called HTPU that can make TensorFlow Lite models run faster on IoT devices. HTPUs are available in several different form factors under the Coral brand name. You can start with prototyping your model on HTPU with the Coral dashboard. It is a mini computer 
that has the ARM CPU and it can run Linux OS. You can also use the Coral USB accelerator that can plug into your computer or other IoT devices. And when running on production, you can use the SOM form factor or the PCI Express one that can be integrated into your existing hardware. And the final platform that TensorFlow Lite currently officially supports is the microcontrollers such as Arduino. Microcontrollers are the small, low power, all in one computers that power everyday devices around us, like microwaves, smoke detectors, toys, and many different types of sensors. They can cost as little as 10 cents for one unit, and with TensorFlow, you can turn them into a device for machine learning. You might not have realized that machine learning models running on microcontrollers is already used in so many devices that you use every day. For example, power detection on many smartphones now typically runs on a small DSP, which then can wake up the rest of your phone. You can get started with TensorFlow Lite on microcontrollers with the Arduino hardware. And you can start doing speech detection with TensorFlow Lite on Arduino in less than five minutes. Check out the TensorFlow Lite website for instruction on how to get started. And next, let's talk about how to optimize your machine learning models to deploy on edge devices. So why do we need this optimization? Well, edge devices generally have less CPU capability and memory, and unlike servers, many of the edge devices is powered by battery. So it is very important to reduce the power consumption. Model size is also a very important factor. Given that the mobile app size is about 20 megabytes, so adding an additional 100 megabytes for a machine learning model is totally unacceptable. There are several ways to optimize your models for on-device deployment. First, you should use a mobile optimized model architecture, then apply quantization and pruning to your model, and finally make sure to leverage the hardware isolator available on the hardware. So now let's go through each of them in more details. First of all, you should choose an architecture that is suitable for on-device machine learning. For example, Inception or ResNet are very popular model architecture for image classification, but if you want to deploy on edge devices, you should go with MobileNet architecture instead of Inception or ResNet. For example, MobileNet v3 is slightly less accurate than Inception v4, but its inference speed is almost 40 times faster, and the model size is almost 8 times smaller, so MobileNet is more suitable for on-device machine learning than Inception. Model accuracy versus model size and inference speed is always a trade-off that it will need to make. To improve accuracy, the model will need to be bigger and it will take longer to run. So it's very important that you find the right balance between accuracy and model size and inference speed for your use case. The good news is Many of the on-device machine learning optimized models, such as MobileNet or EfficientNet Lite, are published with multiple variants so that you can choose the one with the optimal trade-off for your use case. The second optimization method that you need to consider is quantization. When building and training a model, it's very common that we use 32-bit float type to store model weights. However, when running inference, it turns out that even if this 32-bit float widths are approximated into 8-bit integer, the model didn't lose much accuracy. Quantization is the act of approximating your model widths with lower bit representation, and in this case, your integer quantized model will become four times smaller and is also run faster than the original float model. And here is the accuracy number of the quantized version of some of the popular model architecture. You can see that the accuracy drop here is around 1% point, which is very acceptable. The third optimization method we should consider is pruning. It shrinks the model by making some of its width to be zero. 
A prune model is not only smaller, but because it has many zero weights, it reduces the computational needs when doing inference, and it makes the model inference faster. And here's a benchmark of a prune model. You can see that at 50% point, which means we remove half of the weights in the model, the accuracy drop was quite insignificant, around like 1% point. And pruning is compatible with quantization. So you can prune your model first and then apply quantization so that it will get a model, for example, eight times smaller than the original float model with very minimum accuracy drop. And lastly, when you run testable light model on mobile devices, you can speed up the inference time by using the hardware accelerators on the device. ZPUs is a type of hardware accelerator available on many mobile devices, so it's an easy win for you if your model is compatible with CPU. There are also other types of chips, such as the edge TPUs, which is built specifically for machine learning inference. They can speed up your model even more than the CPUs. So that was it. I hope that you find this video useful as a brief introduction to on-device machine learning. And in the next video, we'll talk about how to train and deploy TensorFlow Lite models on edge devices.